solar power, the challenges and opportunities in the steel industry. So, uh, before we start, uh, uh, go into the details of how steel comes into play, let me just give an introduction about wha uh, what is the scenario of uh, pa power and solar power in the world. So, if you take the uh, global scenario, basically, as you all know, the conventional sources like uh, coal and natu uh, natural gas are getting depleted, and there's a lot of, uh, what you call it? Uh, concerns regarding the pollution and climate change. So there's a lot of inf uh, uh, emphasis on renewable source of energy like solar and wind. And of course, solar is the most abundantly available natural resource. So according to the uh, energy, International Energy Agency, by 2050, solar power would be the world's largest source of electricity. And most of these uh, solar in uh, installations will be in China and India. So basically, uh, solar industry is a very uh, upcoming uh, industry which we need to be watching out for. So uh, this is the current uh, global scenario uh, as of 2013. Uh, so Germany actually leads the uh, production of solar power, uh, which corresponds to around uh, 35 mega, uh, gigawatts of power per year, uh, followed by Italy, China, USA, Japan, Australia, and Spain. Now, as you see here, base, uh, India is not right now in the picture, but uh, the total capacities uh, of all these countries together right now is around uh, uh, 2,000 gigawatts. But let, now let me show, uh, show what, uh, okay. Uh, now how solar power works? Basically, it's a very simple uh, thing. Uh, when solar power, uh, uh, sunlight falls on the solar panels, basically they gener uh, generate DC electricity. Now, this DC electricity will be uh, fed into the inverters, which convert it to AC. Now, these, uh, this power we can either use directly for our uh, household purposes, or it can be fed to the grid. Uh, so this is how uh, the norm, uh, right, right now, whatever uh, uh, schemes that the government is uh, coming into play, uh, uh, is proposing, comes into play. So uh, the cost of solar power production uh, when it was actually invented uh, was very high. So, but over the past 40 years, the cost has come down drastically and now it's around uh, one hundredth of what it used to be. So this is why right now there's a boom for solar power. So coming to India, basically India has uh, uh, right now introduced this uh, very ambitious project called Jawaharlal Nehru uh, National Solar Power Scheme, where we target to have 100 gigawatts of solar power by the year 2022. Now, this is very ambitious because the total uh, solar power generation capacity of the whole world is only 200 mega, uh, gigawatts right now. So, India is going to add another 50% of that particular value in the next five years. So, out of this, basically, uh, around 40 gigawatts will be attained through rooftop structures and another 60 gigawatts through uh, ground mounted systems. Now, it has to be noted that uh, the urban areas, uh, the, the urban rooftop which is available in India itself is uh, sufficient to generate up to 200 gigawatts of power. So there is a lot of scope uh, in this particular area. Now, uh, the current in, uh, currently India produces actually 7 gigawatts of uh, power. Uh, as you all, uh, so basically this is the scheme that the uh, the solar power national scheme, uh, uh, this is the plan that they have. So, as you can see, around 40,000 uh, 40, uh, megawatts of power uh, through rooftop projects and uh, another 57 through ground mounted projects. So, this is the target. So, as you all know, basically in the past few uh, weeks, we have, no, not just weeks, past few months, we have been uh, seeing a lot of news, news regarding solar power. So. Actually, uh, the, this particular scheme is in full swing and actually we have uh, surpassed our uh, target for the past one year. That is in 2015 to 2016, the target was only 200 me uh, 2000 megawatts, but we have actually uh, created 3000 megawatts of power. Uh, additional capacity has been in installed. So the leading uh, uh, state in this particular uh, field is actually Tamil Nadu which I added around 900 megawatts of power in the past one year. So, uh, 
Now I have been going on about solar power for quite some time, but why am I talking about it in a steel structural company? But as you might have observed, basically all these power, uh, uh, solar pa uh, panel modules are mounted on steel structures. So there is actually a lot of scope in it. Let me put these things in numbers for you. Now basically as I told you, the current target for the next five years is 100 gigawatt power or uh, 10, uh, uh, 100,000 megawatts in the next five years. Now typically a uh, uh, solar power mounting structure uh, weighs around 30 to uh, 70 uh, kg per kilowatt. So if you take an average of around 50 kg per kilowatt, if you do the uh, math you can see that the total amount of steel that is involved in this per, uh, in the next five years is 5 million metric ton. Now that's a huge amount of steel. So there is definitely a lot of peop uh, scope for people who are actually involved in the steel industry and this needs to be, uh, and there's a lot of scope. Uh, so what all we, do we need to do, uh, learn regarding the solar power systems? So typically there are two types of systems that are uh, actually used in the industry. Uh, one is the fixer type system and next is the tracker system. Tracker systems. So there are different types of tracker systems which are available. Uh, uh, the details of which I'll get, get into next. So what are fixed systems? So fixed systems are fixed, uh, as the name suggests, it's simply fixed, uh, has a fixed framework which supports the module structures. So this is the most common uh, uh, module uh, roof mounted structure and rooftop projects usually uses this one and the inclination is as per the uh, summer angle. So there are no mechanical uh, parts involved in this particular thing and it's easy to construct uh, as well as design. So now, okay, yeah. So next we come to the tracking system. So what is tracking or why do we need tracking? Basically the, as you all know, uh, the, the ma maximum efficiency you'll get from a solar panel when it is facing, the, it's directly facing the sun or the, when the rays of the sun falls perpendicular to the panels. So uh, only during noon time you will have the maximum efficiency for a fixed structure. And also the variation of the, the angle that the uh, sun forms with the uh, uh, east-west direction uh, varies with respect to seasons. So this is why we need uh, tracking systems. So there are typically three types of tracking systems. The first one is a seasonal tracking system uh, wherein you actually uh, uh, move the panels uh, at different times of this thing. That is, in summer you will have a particular angle. Uh, then the panels will be rotated to another degree so that the efficiency is increased in winter time. So on and so forth. So now these things are comparatively uh, uh, uses simple mechanical systems and uh, there's uh, increased efficiency during the off seasons. So next thing is called the single axis tracking systems. So single tracking, tr tracking systems are track the sun on a daily basis. So, uh, so as to maximize the efficiency. So as you can see, basically the efficiency when compared to a fixed system for a single axis track system increases by around 20 to 25%. So that's actually uh, the power generation is actually uh, a lot in these particular cases. Then the next type is called the dual axis tracking system, wherein it not only uh, tracks the sun on a daily basis, but also on a seasonal basis. So, so here we use uh, we use uh, motorized uh, uh, electric motors to rotate the uh, panels about two axes. So here uh, the efficiency increases by around 25 to 30 percent with respect to fixed systems. So when you come to the design of uh, steel design of uh, module mounting structures, basically there are uh, these are the main points that we need to be uh, we need to consider. Firstly, the type of structure, that is whether it's a, uh, uh, what kind of tracking system it is, uh, is it using uh, and what kind of uh, structural system like single, uh, single column system or double column system, so on and so forth. Then the panel size, the orientation, so on and so forth. And uh, th then basic wind speed, uh, that is de depending on the location where we are actually constructing these things. Uh, then the uh, angle of inclination, which is also dependent on the uh, location and the type of sections that we are used. Basically, we can use, uh, typically, uh, right now, uh, uh, people use uh, both box sections as well as cold form steel 
uh, for these things. Uh, and especially for single axis tracking systems, cold form, uh, sorry, uh, box sections are very important because under those systems, there's a lot of torsion coming, come induced on the structure and only torsional members, sorry, uh, box sections can take care of these loads. So uh, let me summarize uh, the whole thing for you. That is the solar power uh, industry is on the rise. So around 100 gigawatts of power needs to be added to the grid by the year 2022, that is in the next five years. And the total steel involved in this uh, is around 5 million metric tons. And the design for, for these structures will depend on the panels, type, wind speed, angle, etc.